And shalom, shalom, shalom. It's so good to be with you once again. My name is Elder Alicia Halliburton and welcome to prayer school. We have been getting some awesome teaching in the area of prayer. So I highly recommend if you haven't been catching those teachings to go back, check those out, look up those prayer school teachings. It will definitely change your life. And so today we're going to just continue in the area of prayer and uh, but today we're going to be dealing with the prayer of peace, provision and protection, prayer of peace, provision and protection. And so before we um, get into the teaching, I wanted to share some information with you that I that I discovered. I was I was, um, you know, just wondering, like, what do people typically pray for? And so this is what this is what one study showed that. Um, and, and also it says that participants could select all that apply. So please note when you're looking at the percentages, but anyway, anyhow, that most people pray for their family or friends, their own problems and difficulties, good things that have recently occurred, sin, people in natural disasters, Elohim's greatness, their future prosperity, um, praying for people of other faiths or no faith government leaders, celebrities, or people in the public eye, or none of the above. So this is what people typically pray for. And I just found it just very eye-opening, um, very enlightening, because when we think about, you know, why prayer was designed and what we are supposed to be using prayer for, um, it's just baffling to think that most of the time when people are praying, they're probably not even, well, it don't have to be a probably. <laughs> most people aren't even praying the will of the Father. What about, I mean, why did Yeshua pray? What about your will, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven? All right, so um, that's why it's so important for us to understand the purpose of prayer, the principles of prayer, and understand it from the perspective of Elohim. Because if we're going to him and he's the one who created it, he's the one who set it up, then we have to have the correct precepts, the correct concepts. We have to be impregnated with the right ideas as it relates to prayer in order to see results. And if our only um, motivation for prayer is for I, 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 me, 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 and just to get what we want done, then that's not the right uh, approach. So that's why it's so important, especially in the area of provi peace, provision, and protection, because those are um, some main areas that we saw, you know, even on that chart, reasons, excuse me, reasons why people are praying, praying for provision, praying for, you know, their needs to be met, things that are important to them. And it's not to say that we cannot come to the Father about these things. However, again, if we don't have his correct precepts when it comes to how to pray for those things and how to approach his throne, then our case is going to get thrown out in court. And that's one of the, the awesome um, things that I have appreciated about um, the teaching that we've been getting in this area is really understanding that prayer is a legal matter, right? So there are rules, there are laws, there are regulations. You don't just walk, if you were, if you were to get a ticket and you had to go to court, you don't just walk in there any kind of way, right? There, there are ways that things are done. And it's the same way in the kingdom, if not that much more important. Um, so let's get right into, into the teaching. We're dealing with prayer of provision. So um, let's, let's think about some differences in the kingdom way versus the American quote unquote way of prayer. So Americans pray when things is wrong. <laughs> only come, I mean, come on now, don't be that child where the father only hear from you when something's wrong and then woe is me and I'm on my knees and all the things and then when everything's good, he don't hear from you. That's not why, why prayer was designed. But the kingdom way, the scripture tells us to pray without ceasing, that the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. 
right? So we want to, um, prayer is a lifestyle. Pray, prayer is a way of life, not just an intermittent thing that we do, not just a ritual that we check off to say, oh, yeah, pray this morning, I'm good. That's not what, that's not what it is. Okay, so the next one focuses on a need or want versus the kingdom way is to focus on the what the father wants. Father, what is it that you want to accomplish today through me? How can I be in more alignment with your thoughts, with your ways, with your precepts? So again, it takes a mindset shift because if we're so used to prayer um, only being only um, if we're only used to viewing prayer as a way to get something, then it's going to be hard for us to, you know, really unlock the kingdom keys of prayer because it's complete opposite. Um, the American way focuses on what can I have versus the kingdom way focuses on what can I give? Father, what can I render to you? Right. So that's why it's so important for us to understand. Also, present uh, the American way presents a problem versus the kingdom way presents the answer. Um, one legal term that we've learned as it relates to prayer is a petition. And we know that when we petition, what we're doing is we're using the word. We're using the principles that have already been laid out for us. And we're bringing them to the Father, so we're not focusing on the problem. And we'll get into we'll get into that in, in a little more depth in just a minute here. But we're not focusing on the problem. We're not coming to Him just complaining and crying, and um, you know, tell Him about your problems. And you know, some people have, there's this um, this idea that the father, he's just like a sounding board or, you know, and, and while he is our friend, the scripture talks about how he's, he's a friend to us, but it, <laughs> he's not our sounding board for us to just complain. He's waiting to hear his word. He's waiting for us to activate a law so that something can be done about whatever it is that's going on. Um, so let, let's continue here. So, First of all, we must understand when we when it comes to praying for provisions or things or you know our needs being met, we must first understand that Elohim has already provided everything that we need from the very beginning of time. So let's look here at the beginning in Bereshith. And um, of course, we use original names of scripture. So that's Bereshith Gen or, or Genesis in English. 1 and 27, and it reads, so Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then Elohim blessed them, and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And Elohim said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. So there's the provision right there, right? He gave them access before he even up and before he even inserted man in this place, he had already created a system of provision, of protection, of peace. So um, and it says also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green earth for food. And it was so. So, again, those provisions, they were here. They're already here. So it's not um, us looking for them or wondering, can we have them? Or if we're kingdom citizens, we have access to those provisions. Um, Ephesians or Ephesians 1 and 3 reads, blessed be Elohim and the father of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in the Messiah. So again, it's already done. He's already provided. We don't have to, we, <laughs> wow, we don't have to um, focus so much on father, please provide, please provide. I need this. I need that. The provisions are already here. So the key is to understanding the laws of how to receive, understanding the principles and making sure that we're being obedient. And when we apply the laws of the kingdom, uh, then we, we automatically receive those provisions. Okay. 
Um, and really quickly, <laughs> one thing that I found interesting as I was kind of looking at some of um, some of the research, and it was even talking about like how often do different religious groups pray. One of the things that I noticed was Jews, uh, as a religious group, is what we, uh, as a, as a religious group, um, they pray the least, but they actually have the most wealth. So I thought that was interesting, um, and it's and and so I say that because as kingdom ambassadors, we should be the ones who have the wealth. We should be the ones who, by just applying the laws, by just being obedient, that we have automatic success. Um, but the thing is, there's such a lack of knowledge and lack of application of the rules, precepts of the kingdom that we have what we have and are wondering why we're in the predicaments that we're in. Um, so again, that's why it's just so important to get those um, correct precepts. So let's see here. Um, we also must recognize the Sabbath covenant. In Bereshit, uh 2 and 23, it reads, and on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which Elohim had created and made. Okay, so that word rest, it is a huge misconception because most people, when they think of rest, what do you think of? Just sit down, right? just enjoy, just observe. And that's not what that word means. <laughs> so again, you know, that's why I'm so thankful that we are always studying from the original and, and again, chasing after the precepts of Elohim so that we can fully understand what it is he was trying to say when he said it. Because if we look at that word rest, it's talking about the Sabbath and it's spelled Shin Bet Tab. Um, and so really that that word rest he established his covenant of peace and provision and protection he complete he uh he completely completed all of that and so it's really a time to acknowledge his covenant to acknowledge his provisions and so when we look at the hebrew word meaning of rest or sabbath Shin, it means provider of peace or protection. And we also know that Shin means to consume or to destroy. Um, and then Bet deals with what's inside. It deals with the family. It deals with the person's heart. And then Tav, we know, means to mark or identify. And it's dealing with covenant. So when we look at this word um, and we when we use the Hebrew keys of Revelation to understand the application of this word, then we know that that word Sabbath and that word rest is dealing with a covenant of peace and protection, the power of the covenant that's on the inside. So again, when it comes to um, acknowledging and recognizing the provisions that we already have, Father, you are my provider. I thank you that I fully acknowledge you as my owner, that I'm simply manager of the resources that you have provided to me. Of course, you know, now we have bank accounts. We have, some people have jobs. We have businesses. We have different ways uh, or, um, yeah, different ways of our needs being met. Um, and so, and so again, just being able to acknowledge that it is the father who has provided for us and who has made that available to us, to all of us as kingdom citizens. All right. So um, why are we praying? That's the next thing we want, we want to evaluate again. When we're praying for provisions, we must evaluate why am I praying? Is it because I'm I am uh trying to inform the father of what's going on? Father, I this bill, I don't have enough. We'll, okay, we'll talk about we'll talk about some reasons why later, uh, why you may not have enough. But however, there's also the principle of seed time and harvest. So we know that in the kingdom, we're on a, a commonwealth system whereby as through our obedience, through us returning um, our tithes, then the scripture says that he will rebuke the devourer for our sake, for us 
honoring him with our first fruit that we have access to overflow in our finances. And we're and there are other all types of ways um, that we're able to receive through us first giving. So if you're not a big giver, then um, it's no wonder why you're why you may not have have those provisions because Elohim's word says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So if we're not uh, engaging those laws, then we're automatically ineligible. So we're going to talk about ineligibility as well. Um, so at any rate, when we're praying for provisions, the first thing is for us to do a self-evaluation and say, why am I praying? What is it here? What, you know, where, where is my heart? as it comes to this? Am I acknowledging the father as owner? Am I acknowledging the provisions that he's already given to me? Am I even, do I even have a grateful heart? Do I even have a grateful heart? Am I being greedy? Where, where, where's my heart? Where's my mind? All right. So um, we don't have to inform the father of our situation. He already knows. Matthew six and seven, it reads, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray. And this is Yeshua talking to the disciples and teaching them the kingdom concepts of, of prayer. And so he said, therefore pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What is he doing here? First of all, he's acknowledging He's acknowledging our father. That's the first thing that we should always do when we come to him in prayer. Father, I acknowledge you. Hallowed be your name. Thank you, Father. Uh, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So first, what, what is he doing? He's acknowledging the father, his will, what he wants to be done in the earth. And then he asks for the provisions. Give us this day our daily bread. So there's that uh, petition for provisions and what and, and how do he ask he said give us this day our daily bread that that communicates an understanding that the father is the one who provides for us daily that those provisions are already set aside but it's up to us to, to understand the laws and to know how to get them so it's more important that we know his laws and statutes and how to apply those principles that work in our benefit so in Romeo 8 it reads and we know that in all things, Elohim works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So, you know, again, when it comes to um, praying for provisions, first we need to un first we need to know, are we eligible? Are you eligible? eligible for these benefits so some of the things that we need to be eligible are what and we've talked about this in prayer school so i won't dwell on it number one are you born again are you born again have you has your mind been renewed and when i say are you born again i'm not just saying that you know from a religious perspective because there are so many people who will tell you that um yeah i, be I believe i believe in jesus I believe that he died on the cross for my sins, the, you know, all of that. Yeah, I believe. Uh, well, even the, the scripture says the demons believe, they tremble and believe. So <laughs> there has been a huge uh, disservice in the, in the fact that so many people believe that just by saying something with your mouth, but your actions are doing something else, that you can receive the benefits. Application denied. It doesn't work like that. So we have to make sure that there is an alignment. There has to be some fruit, some evidence. When we say that we are born again, there's a lifestyle that goes with that. Um, and that especially applies to, to um, praying for provisions. There's a lifestyle that goes with that, a lifestyle of dedication, a lifestyle of obedience, of being a liberal and cheerful giver, of not uh, living in strife because we know that strife nullifies grace and it will hinder 
um, our seed from multiplying. And there's also a law of scholarship. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We have to understand the kingdom laws and the kingdom way. So it's not just saying something. It's not just, you know, um, saying I believe, but there's no lifestyle to go along with it. And then we wonder why we are facing the difficulties that we are and why our prayers are not being answered. So my brother, my sister, I don't want your application to be denied. So what we need to do is make sure that we are in right standing um, with the father, living an overcoming life, not in strife, being obedient um, in the laws of giving, because that is the key to unlocking um, provisions. So are you eligible? If not, stop right there, because Elohim cannot provide for a law breaker. Um, and so that is all that we have time for on today. I thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to continue um, in this area. And like I said, in prayer school. So please continue to join us so that you can learn how uh, to have an effective, productive prayer life. Thank you so much for joining us and shalom.